What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie, and this is part 12 of my deep dive into the Moody Blues Studio catalog. Um, back when I started this, I said that I'm pretty sure I've only heard two Moody Blues albums before in my life. Neither one of them I remember much about other than the fact that I heard them. And this one we're on today, The Other Side of Life, the 1986 release. That is the other one I heard. I was 15. I think we had just ridden our bikes. Don't think we were anybody I knew had a car at that point. I do it, knew a guy, but he didn't go us on these record trips. Rode our bikes to Costa Mesa from Huntington Beach to uh, Music Market. Bought a bunch of albums, my friends and I. Went back to my friend uh, Danny's place. Played video games and listened to music. Uh, in television or, or old school OG Atari. Um, I think Coleco might have been out by then. Might have been playing that, uh, uh, that Smurfs game. Um, but, uh, one of my friends bought this and we listened to it. I have no memory of it. Um, made such an impression on me that I did not seek out any further Moody Blues albums after that. Also, I said when I started that I knew three songs, uh, Nights in White Satin, Tuesday Afternoon, and sure enough, the other one is the lead off track to this, Your Wildest Dreams. Instantly came back to me. This is the one I've been thinking about all these weeks, months that I've been doing this months, right? couple. So um, 1986, and I'll say this, this might be a short video. My parents were big on the, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all type thing. I have some nice things to say about this, but the 80s production, the sheen, the sort of compression that 80, a lot of 80s pop had in which it was like, we got to sound big for the radio and that's our end goal. If you listen to it in headphones, there's lots of layers of stuff, but it's just layers of electronic, synthetic noise, drums, bad bass sound. Um, I, I just, the sound of it is not attractive. I think there are a number of moments on this album that if this had been made in the early 70s, and I don't think the songwriting is, the Moody Blues are staying in a lane. They have a lane, they're staying in it. I think these songs could have been written by them in the 70s, and had they been made in the 70s, and with instruments in the 70s and produced in the 70s and given that sort of moody blues, orchestral indulgence where like all the songs are layered with so many things. There's a lot of songs on here that I think could have worked, but they don't work in the 80s. I, I think the other issue I have is there's a number of songs in here where if like all of a sudden like Don Henley had started singing like what they're shipping up the guns to the jungle or whatever it is she wants all she wants to do is dance i think if don henley had started singing a song uh there's one song slings and arrows if like uh what's his name do 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 um brian brian uh the dude uh the rockabilly dude stray cats that guy what is the what is his name brian somebody Ugh! i can see his face i can see his hair oh my gosh i'm totally you know the guitar player fantastic guitar player for the Stray Cats. But if he had started singing a song, I hope it comes to me. Um, if he had started singing a song, I'd be like, oh yeah, this is a Stray Cat song. If like any number of random 80 artists had just started singing, like half of these songs, I think just kind of sound like bad generic pop. Um, Brian, what is, Brian Seltzer, yeah. Um, and so I think that's the problem. I think the 80s are the problem. The fact that they really, they're just writing songs kind of soft rock. I think there's maybe a lot more high energy on this album than maybe some of the others. Like a lot of these kind of sound like big radio songs. Um, but I don't know. It, it just doesn't work for me. The opening track, Your Wildest Dreams, maybe the best thing on here. And it kind of doesn't do much for me now, just like it didn't do much for me back in 86. It's just 80s synth driven, album oriented rock for the radio kind of soft rock, little Steve Winwoody, little Don Henley, -y, little just E, 80s E. Um, talk and talk and really don't like, just 80s bland pop, um, sterile 80s beats, the layers of production, like they're still layering their songs, but now it just, it's all compressed to have this like big 80s sound, you know, to work on the radio that I don't think works. Uh, rock and Roll Over You has the, what is it like a rock? I'm going to roll over you. I can't with that. Um, this is one where I think if uh, 
Oh, this is one where there's this really nice 80s key intro that kind of works, but it then goes into the song that it doesn't work for. I think the opening, like little, there are moments throughout this in songs and intros and middle passages that work, but just overall, they're not connecting with me. Um, like Rock and Roll Over You, I think if that had been a straight out dance number, like an Anna Motion takes this or some dance group, I think there's a vibe here that that could have been that, but the Moody Blues are not that band. Um, I Just Don't Care is an 80s ballad. Uh, Running Out of Love, kind of catchy. I could kind of see like a, an, a Jeff Lynn, George Harrison type of vibe. If like the production was a little bit cleaner and crisper, like on Harrison's Jeff Lynn album, mind, mind's blanket on Cloud Nine. Like maybe there's something here. There's a nugget of like pop goodness and running out of love, but it's kind of wasted. Um, just the production just kind of annoys me. The Other Side of Life, which has some bad drums in it, has those John Fogarty Vans can't dance drums that just kill me every time and not in a good way. Was this a single? The Other Side of Life was a single, right? Because I'm pretty sure I recognize the song. I like this song. This song is a good song. Um, it's got that Glenn Fry late night swagger, that song that he did, I think, for Miami Vice. It's just got that 80s kind of slow burn, late night swagger song. Like I'm not sure what The Other Side of Life is, but the vibe is cool. I like it. This song works, and I think with a better production, it's it's a it's a knock it out of the park type song. But if I'm making a Moody Blues playlist, I'm dropping the other side of life on there. I, I actually kind of like that song. Don't like the drums. There's this just horrible drum bit in it. Um, like the song. The spirit sounds like they're trying to rock out for a brief bit, but then the drums completely ruin that vibe. Um, there are moments throughout it that I think maybe could work. They don't. Slings and Arrows, I think this is the one that kind of gives me like a weird rockabilly Stray Cats vibe early on in the song and then kind of doesn't really commit to anything and just kind of becomes bland. Um, the drum beat almost sounds like it could go into like a Prince dance number, but of course it doesn't. Um, and then it may be a fire. The closing song has some really nice guitar energy. Um the beginning doesn't really sound like the song, but to me evokes sort of a, a people get ready, the Rod Stewart cover of that in the 80s with Jeff Beck on the guitar, kind of evokes that feel. And then there's kind of an outro solo that's, I just has a nice tone to it, has a nice feel, kind of works in this 80s, just jungle of electronic noise that it may be fire. Pretty straightforward guitar driven in the fact that it's playing a really cool melody throughout and you know, it's not a rocker by any sort, but uh, it may be a fire kind of works. The Other Side of Life, it may be a fire. I'm going to say those two songs actually kind of work for me. Um, but everything else on this album, I'm not a fan of bands saying, hey, we're going to do this album acoustic, and then we're going to just re release an acoustic version of that. If the Moody Blues were to take this album, do no electronic music whatsoever, even drop the synths and just play piano, and do sort of an acoustic version of this album, I think I might like that. I think there's enough in here to like maybe salvage something like that. But I do think the era, the 80s, the poisonous sound of the 80s, for me, it makes this album almost unlistenable. Though the other side of life is going on a playlist. It's going to stand out horribly from the other songs. Uh, but I think that's going on a playlist. So I have this rank last. It just, it can't hold a candle to anything else. I'll even take that True to the Times early 60s album, which at least sounds like that era in a good way, whereas I think this sounds like its era in a bad way. Um, not a horrible album. There are some things to salvage in it. I fear what's coming next. I do feel like we're maybe on the downward slide towards the end of this run, maybe hoping for a surprise or two or a move away from this 80s sound as we go on further into the 90s. But yeah, this one, this was the first one. This is kind of what I was expecting when we got here. Thought we would get here sooner. Now we're here. It's not as horrible as, as I expected it would be, but I can't see myself going back to listen to this album again, uh, which is why uh, The Other Side of Life, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rescue and put on a playlist and, and still have that in my rotation. But yeah, 
anyways, that's it. Uh, would absolutely love, love to know your thoughts on this album, what I'm missing, whether it's salvageable, you know, you know how comments work. Subscribe, like, share, comment, do those things you do. And then go listen to that album I did like two albums ago, man. What was that? That, er, that first 80s album they did? That thing was a friggin' amazing. The one before the present, right? Whatever that was, that was a fantastic. Long Distance Voyager, man, 1981. Thing was a bomb, like in a good way. Home run. Yeah, go listen to that. And then work your way to this and maybe you'll like it. All right, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Peace. Talk to you later.